Good morning internet, it is quarter to nine in the morning and welcome back to the channel. Welcome here at Lake Isabel. I'm right here having a lake view. Well, having a pancake with fruit breakfast. Not too shabby. I'm getting ready for today's ride. Now that I think about it, today is actually the last full day riding in Guatemala. Almost crossing into Belize already. Um, but I'll show you on the map what the plan is for today. The plan. I am now right here on Lago de Isabel. And I will first ride to this town right here on the edge, Rio Dulce, to get some fuel. And then I'm gonna head up this way, like this. And then I think there's a small road actually here, which I will take. And then I'm gonna end up. It's not actually on the map. Um, but it's called Yaksha. And it's somewhere, somewhere here. Okay, to Yaksha I go. So I think in the last video I already explained why I cannot enter Belize from the south side. That all has to do with, uh, well, avoiding having Alaska illegally in the country again. So that means that I'll have to ride much further north within Guatemala before I can cross into Belize. That makes today's ride, besides it's the last full ride in Guatemala, I think also probably the longest ride in Guatemala in one day, uh, 266 kilometers. Which in the grand scale of things, and considering the whole Patagonia to Alaska distance, absolutely nothing. The area that I'm going to in Guatemala is quite famous for its Mayan ruins and the most famous Mayan ruins in Guatemala are Tikal. But I'm not going to Tikal because I've already been there 10 years ago and I don't want my, my journey through Guatemala to be the exact same copy of what I already did 10 years ago. So that's why... Ooh, coconuts! <laughs> So that's why I decided to, to visit uh, another archaeological site which is in the same area but which is a lot lesser known. That's where I'm gonna go today! Let's put my goggles on. I have to go that way but let's first find a petrol station here. Permiso, un gasolinera, ¿Eh? un gasolinera. Gasolinera, ya ves. Por ese lado. Okay, gracias. It's quicker to ask somebody. Or hanging from the back there. <laughs> Why not? Pardon? Uh, lleno, uh, regular. That is done. Filled up almost three gallons. So. <laughs> I think my tank was almost empty. Just in time. Hola. Voy por Yaksha. Yaksha? Sí. Ah. ah, okay. Okay, gracias. Adiós. Hola. 
please just stop me. They just wanted to see the bike papers, ownership uh, papers, that's it. And then they let me go on my merry way. Getting quite close to Yaksha. It's only uh, well, less than three kilometers from here. The trail gets darker and darker. Okay, let's go and explore. Let me first get back to the main track. So there are three Mayan sites in this area. The biggest one and the most visited one is Yashka. But then there's two other ones. Uh, one is called Naranjo, which at the moment they're still excavating uh, that site. And the third one is called Naku. And that's the one I'm going now. That one lies the furthest into the jungle. And I think it's the least visited. Well, I think nobody actually goes there. So that is the one that I'm going to check out first. And if I am super, super lucky, I might see some wildlife because this area, it's full of wildlife. And there's a lot of big cats, a lot of jaguar, uh, what are they called, uh, ocelot and other big cats. I am loving this ride already. How awesome is this, eh? And I think it's also the, the knowing that there are jaguars walking around here. Just, I don't know, gives a special feeling for sure. Colibri, see it? Just there. Oh, now it went. They're a little bit too small to capture on a GoPro. See, as usual, the deeper you ride into the jungle, the worse the trail becomes. Nothing will stop Alaska and me. Yeah, look at this. Oh, this this has to rank as one of my best rides in Central America. This is just awesome. Skip that one. Right here. Although I don't know how much better this is. Uh, it's the only way is through.
I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I can see now why nobody comes here. This is uh, <laughs> literally every 10 meters you get another one of these. Also, this is a one way in, one way out. So I'm gonna have to battle the same way back. again there is still no end to the mud pits I have to keep on battling through this pit after pit after pit Nice safe, nice safe. Twelve kilometers to go still. Oh, twelve kilometers of this. It's gonna take me a while. Yeah, I'm stuck, stuck. Small mistake. I tried to avoid that. I came through here. I wanted to go on here. And then I slid into this thing here. It's not good. Not good. You can see she's standing here on her own. No side stand required. Great.
can't get her any further up here, so I'm gonna try. Hopefully with the wood. It's gonna work. I'm afraid not. That didn't work. Again. That was the hardest recovery I've ever done. Oh, that took a lot of energy and strength. Unbelievable. I am so hot. I'm gonna ride without a jacket. Not something I normally do, but I'm so hot. I really need to just ride slowly, cool down a little bit. Because that took a lot out of me. Oh. I've never been so stuck. And I took my top off to tie my front brake. Because the first time that I almost had it, she rolled away back into the mud. So I tied the front brake so that wouldn't happen. And normally when I have all my gear with me, of course I have some cloth to tie it down with, but now <laughs> I literally have nothing for my own clothes. I can't believe I did that. That's hectic, okay. It's uh, yeah, more than 10 kilometers still. That's uh, more than half hour at this speed. Oh no, more mud. A lot more mud. Which one? <sighs> Frying clutches here, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Oh no, this is a bad one. There's water everywhere. I'm first gonna have a look which way is the best. Because there's a swamp over there. 
swamp over here probably this is the driest bit yeah I have to go through here look at Alaska <laughs> Look how there's a mess! We are both a mess, Alaska. <sighs> nothing more, nothing less. But a mess. This is kind of sandy. Like very coarse sand. And most of it is dry. It's uh, still a bit rough, nevertheless. I don't care what you say, that I walk my bike, I don't care. <laughs> if it gets me through, I'll do it. Oh no, this is not a bad one. I think through the middle here, and then around. And it's not even the rainy season. Can you believe that? I think in the rainy season you just can't come here at all. At all, at all. Wow, look at this tree. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. I mean, all the struggles aside, this ride is just incredible I can't believe I'm riding here to be honest although I don't know how much is riding and how much is struggling but I mean look at this it's incredible uh, I saw a big animal, I saw a big animal. It ran really fast into the jungle here. Oh, I, I, I caught a glimpse, absolute a glimpse. I really, I do not know what it was. I, I think I saw spots, but I'm not sure. It was a, a split second and it was standing on the road and it just jumped into the bush. Oh dear, where am I going? This is the new road. Finally, the path has kind of become a little bit normal again. I think I've just also climbed a little bit. See, it says elevation almost 300 meters. So I think I've left the swampy area behind me. Which is very good news, very good news. Because <laughs> I've been almost riding, well not riding, but I've been going at it for two hours and I'm not even there yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, that was a little bit deeper than I thought. So yeah, I'm averaging about 10 kilometers per hour. It's not a hell of a lot. I'm 
Bienvenidos. Welcome to the archaeological site Nakum. I made it. I made it. I don't know which part was harder. To get here <laughs> or then to actually find the temples and the pyramids. Um, which way? I don't know. Oh no. No, I definitely did not come through here. <laughs> okay, look at that. Little piece of art. Oh man. <laughs> 